Hi, this is Ash from Ego Experts. We're at the Desktop Summit in Berlin. Uh, lucky enough to have Fania and Marco from Basicom. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Contour uh, on Plasma at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so over to you guys, if you can uh, run us through the stuff that you've been going through of late. Okay, sure. So yeah, we're here at the Desktop Summit in Berlin. And actually we brought a WeTab with the running Plasma Active on it and show you the latest improvements. And if we ha have a look here, we already had on the last time is the activity screen. Uh, what we now uh, updated here is that we can actually move the boxes. We can also yeah, expand it and make it bigger to adapt the user's needs. So what the whole concept is based on is that we have different activities that we can actually choose here on the right. It's an activity switcher and um, we consider activities uh, situations that yeah you can just adapt to your needs. So if you want a workspace maybe for your last Barcelona trip you can just create that activity and um, add plasmoids on it like widgets or you can also add um, small resources as we call them so that could be files that could be contacts and um, just to show you maybe another example would be maybe your summer vacation in Budapest where you have uh, containing data that is considered to be important for that uh, activity. So if you click maybe on some flight tickets uh, and some documents you can just open them in the applications that are linked to our Plasma Active. What you can do is change back via the task switcher up here and um, can just click on it once again. It's touch friendly, it's big buttons, so for thumbs there's no problem to actually interact with it. What is new now in this version, still work in progress, but what is new now is the recommendation overlay. We have here a list of recommendations that are adapted to this activity. So actually we track what documents are opened, what yeah, applications are important for this application, uh, for this activity, sorry. And actually it's get, it gets updated. So if you have a look, we have one PDF inside of here. So if I am maybe consider the Parliament JPEG to be important because I'm manipulating it, I'm editing it, I look at it really like often in the week, I can click on it, go back to my activity workspace, and then it's actually here, updated in the list. So what we try to do with that is actually yeah, track the user behavior and give smart recommendations of uh, new actions that will take place maybe in the next week or yeah, in the next minutes. What you can easily do as well now with that version is search for important data that you want to add. So first you use the keyboard, thus you interact with the, um, with the different categories. So if I want to add relevant material, maybe the desktop summit, I just tap on it, click on add items, and um, where is it gone actually? It should be in some yeah, box. It's, it's in here, so it's added here. Yeah, there we have it. So what we have as well is yeah, Marco, who is more on the Plasma side, who can explain a bit further. Okay, so uh, thank you, Fania. Uh, basically what we uh, done here is a, a complete works, uh, workspace for uh, tablet devices. It's um, based uh, on uh, Plasma Technologies, a project that started in um, uh, KDE some years ago for, for the desktop, but uh, we did never focused exactly for the desktop. Our uh, uh, our goal was um, always to be uh, a bit uh, uh, more broad and generic for the whole device spectrum uh, so that uh, would have been one day uh, easy to adapt the, the library, the framework uh, to a mobile environment or to a media center environment or whatever and here we are uh, uh, right now with uh, um, a system that is targeted towards tablets and uh, in the years also other new technologies from uh, uh, Qt have, uh, have been brought in 
such as QML. This is uh, uh, completely complete done in QML. This uh, this screen, for instance, is a is a plugin that it's um, it it um, some C++ code has ha had to be written. Uh, for its functionality, but it's a core user interface. It's completely in QML, and uh, um, can be can be adapted uh, really easily for um, um, even for different devices. If um, if uh, for instance uh, in the next in iteration we would like to to do a handled uh, version, I. I would just to have to to put some uh, specific handled uh, targeted QML files in the his uh, its uh, package format, and uh, it would with with, with a little small um, change of code, it would change completely the the user interface experience for uh, uh, for an handled device. Uh, this uh, this uh, activity switcher is uh, uh, done is done in QML as well, and it's uh, not uh, not that uh, that much code. Uh, all the all the backend um, that we have for um, for showing uh, those icons, it's um, based uh, on a technology called Nipomac. That is a uh, that is it's a storage. That uh, uh, what it does is uh, storing metadata about what we call resources, uh, because right right now um, we have the, uh, those recommendations and and those items that are uh, mostly files. But for Nipomac, there is uh, no difference between w what is actually a file, what is a bookmark, what is a link to an application, what is a contact. So um, uh, what we uh, what is our target is to um, treat in the same way all the information that uh, that is important for the, for the user uh, without tra transcuring uh, completely the implementation detail that could be a file uh, stored somewhere or could be a contact uh, stored in a in a web service or whatever for for the. Um, for the uh, Nipomax storage, everything everything is the same. And uh, what else could be could be um, important from a technical point of view? Uh, these um, task switcher and the window manager for the for the whole project is the KD1 Queen that uh, uh, recently um, got OpenGL ES support. So um, it will be mm, easy to make it run uh, uh, not only o o on these type of tablets that are that are almost almost netbooks with the, with the Intel processor, but also with with more embedded hardware uh, such as ARM. It would it will run uh, pretty well, and um, it's uh, it's also starting uh, the support to uh, Wayland. That will be the new, uh, the new windowing system that will uh, hopefully replace replace X. Well, yeah, that's uh, the beta is going to be introduced in 1.3, so uh, yeah. hopefully you can start developing on that. Yeah, that that was that was uh, the goal, indeed. And uh, yeah, I think as a, as an overview, uh, mm. it's it's okay if you have. Any any question? Um, for for actually, let me zoom back out. Mm -hmm. okay. Smiley faces now. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so so, what sort of things do you see uh, for uh, Plasma Active and Contour? How do you see it uh, evolving further now? Well, we're still on um, uh, emphasizing more the recommendations overlay, getting it better and better because uh -huh. the kind of algorithms we have implemented right now, we didn't test them, so we don't know if the user just get an information overflow of all the recommendations we do, or we have to be smarter there. Uh -huh. We have to, yeah, make it more detailed and more grained to actually provide useful data for the user and not overwhelming him. So that is one point. 
Uh, and as, uh, as I said, at the moment it's still a bit more oriented to uh, files, mm. uh, while uh, what we want is um, is to be really, really generic information for the user. It doesn't matter if it's a file or if it's a geographic location mm. Mm. or if it's a contact, a phone number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the recommendations, with the particular algorithms that you use on the, uh, are they algorithms that you guys have uh, developed yourselves? Or is that third party uh, uh, resources? I, I don't really follow the um, development of, or of this part, but um, there, um, uh, what um, what you guys are using are uh, some uh, uh, some old well-known uh, statistic-based algorithm. Something uh, that is uh, has been developed right now in a university. Mm, uh, exactly. Uh, so it's it's um, basically. Uh, there is some well, well, well proven algorithm and something that it's still a bit more edgy, but um, yeah, but it's not only about statistics. I think it's not a little bit more clever. So it's like if you open a file, it also, on, um, also checks if you really have the focus on it, and if you're not just unintentionally open the file mm -hmm. and it just stays there, but it's in the background and it's not important at all. But we actually consider oh, yeah, if the focus is, is in there, if it's edited, if it's saved as a new version mm -hmm. or something. So we are a little bit smarter than only everything that opens up must be relevant for the user. And also actually data that comes directly behind is important as well. So files that are directly opened after another one a really long time for the user can be considered as important as well. So mm -hmm. we try to improve here really getting the data that is important for the user and not tracking just yeah, we have a, anything. We have a, a system-wide service that uh, uh, it's used uh, by application to say, I have now opened this file and uh, um, the environment can check, is this the, is this the uh, window that has the focus exactly. for how long uh, the, the window had focus? Yeah. Uh, did, did that window change its, its file in mm -hmm. some way? Or was that a, an event of viewing or was that an, an event of modifying so it can be weighted in a different way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers it for myself. Uh, okay. uh, thanks, uh, Marco, uh, Fadia. Uh, much Thank appreciated. You. Thank uh, you. And we look forward to other stuff that Basicom comes out with in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.